All right, all right, all right. Now it may be a sign that I have been in lockdown for too long, but you and I need to discuss two critical issues today, Matthew McConaughey and the terminal. Let's start with Matt. You know, Bobby Bandito. Apparently some of you think that I resemble him. When this first showed up in a comment, I was thinking, well, that's weird, but they keep coming. Comments, emails, private comments. So now I'm thinking, what's going on? I don't have his hair, I don't have his physique, I don't drive a Lincoln, and I don't have that nice, buttery, smooth East Texas accent that he's so famous for. I'm just not seeing it, so let's ask the family. So Liza, do you think I resemble Matthew McConaughey? No, you do not look anything like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, just like chop off the top of his head, like the hair part, and then like stick it on your head. You totally look like Matthew McConaughey. Maybe a little bit. Well, that didn't really help. And you can see, I have a problem here. I mean, I don't even know what this means. I don't know if we're talking about Sahara, Amistad, Bernie, or We Are Marshall. This whole resemblance thing could mean a lot of different things. So today I wanna to ask all of you to do me a favor. I need your help settling this serious family debate. Matthew McConaughey is a cool guy. I'm just not seeing it, but I trust you. And so I put a pinned comment down in the comment section below please just take a moment and let me know. Do you think there's actually a resemblance here or do you think people are just trying to mess with my mind? Please be honest, we're friends, I can take it. And thank you so much, this means a lot. Wow, I feel so much better now. Now on for item number two, and that is the terminal. Now, you all know that I teach for a living, I teach computer science, I watch a lot of students learn how to program. And one of the biggest deficiencies that I see over and over in my career is the terminal. The terminal is one of the oldest interfaces that we have to actually interact with our machine. It's there on any machine. And if you watch my videos often, you know that I use the terminal a lot. In the demos that I show you, when I'm working with code, I like to work in the terminal. But it's amazing how often I see students who are in their juniors, senior year, and still aren't really comfortable in command line land. They really haven't joined the terminal. They really haven't become comfortable there. Now, the reason for this, I think that students can often get away without using the terminal for a long time or using it just as much as they need to, but not learning all that much about it. And they don't see any serious negative consequences until they do. And this is a really common issue for a lot of new programmers. A lot of us get into this game and we first look at it and say, this terminal thing is really weird. Yeah, there's a command for everything. I know I can probably do it in the terminal, but I know how to open a window and drag and drop in Finder, I can move files around and I can create directories and do all these things that I normally, that I could do in the terminal, I can do them in the GUI and so does it really matter? Isn't the GUI enough? And the answer is as a programmer, no, it's really not enough. So today I wanna to give you three reasons why you really should spend some more time today to get better acquainted with the terminal. Reason number one, it's faster. Just the other day I was programming with my daughter and she turns to me and says, hey dad, do you remember when I used to complain about you making me use the terminal? And it's funny because now that I'm comfortable in the terminal, everything is so much faster and so much easier. And you're gonna find it's really true. You don't realize how much time it takes to move your mouse over and click on stuff and drag things over. And as you become more comfortable in the terminal, you'll find that nine times out of 9.5, two, it's gonna be a lot faster. Reason number two is that by using the terminal more often, you get a better understanding of how your computer actually works. Here's what happens. Let's say you're moving along and you think, hey, I've used the ls command, I wonder what else it can do. And we type man ls and we check out the man page for ls. If you're not familiar with ls, that's the command for listing the files in a directory. And if you're not familiar with man pages, man, that's short for manual. This is the documentation on your computer that basically holds the keys to the mysteries of the universe. So any Anyway, you're interested in LS, you check out the man page. First of all, you look down here and you think, wow, there are so many different options here. I never realized that LS could do so much. It seems like such a simple program. Look at all the different things it can do. You might notice that you can color the output. That's pretty cool. But eventually you're gonna see a term that you don't recognize, okay? Like symbolic link or inode. And then if you're like me, you Google symbolic link and you get a lesson in file systems. And an hour later you emerge late for whatever you were supposed to be doing, but with a much better understanding of how your computer actually works. Because the terminal and the man pages provide you with a wealth of information, or in the worst case, they provide breadcrumbs that can lead you to a wealth of information if you want to explore them. Finally, reason number three, the terminal will teach you the wisdom of Unix. Now I know this sounds like guru on the mountain nonsense. Let me explain what I mean. If you look inside any modern operating system, just about everything you see in some way or another originated from Unix. It either came from Unix, it was inspired by Unix, even Microsoft borrows stuff from Unix, although they modify it enough for plausible deniability. But one of the great things we got from Unix as programmers was a philosophy of how programs should work. 
So a good Unix program is small, it's robust, and it does one thing well. And it should also be composable with other small, simple, robust programs that do one thing well in order to accomplish more complicated things. Now, you and I don't have to write our programs like this. Many people don't. But this was an important cultural decision, and it stuck. That's why you have little programs like ls and grep and cat and wc. And that's why you can pipe them together like this to accomplish more complicated tasks. And that's a powerful idea for any programmer, especially those of you that are just getting started out. I'm talking to you Windows users as well. You have a terminal. It's there. You just have to go find it. But the more time you spend with the terminal, the more time you spend with these commands and learning about them and watching how they work and how you can compose them together, the more this idea is going to distill on your soul and become part of who you are. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. So if you aren't doing this already, today I want to give you some homework. Your homework is to spend some more time each day in the terminal. Not sure where to start? Here's a list of commands. Look them up, explore what they do, and see if you can do something cool with them. And in case you're thinking this is kid stuff, you know it all already, I do this once a week. Just explore something new, explore a new command, something that I haven't used recently. And it's amazing how often I learn new things. And so when you do this, when this little piece of homework changes your life, then you come back and you click like on this video, you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next one. And you subscribe if you wanna become a great programmer with formidable skills. There's a lot of ways to support this channel, both by spreading the word and by contributing on Patreon. I really appreciate all of you who have. In short, thank you for all you do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.